How's it going, guys? Jared Lopes back here with you on the Dad Tired Podcast. As always, so good to be with you. If you just stumbled upon the podcast for the first time, welcome. Uh, If you're wondering who we are, what we're all about, we are just a bunch of young dads, normal dudes who are trying to fall in love with Jesus and to help our family do the same. So if you resonate with that goal, if you're trying to figure out what it looks like to be the spiritual leader of your home, you stumbled upon the right podcast. We're a group of guys that are trying to do that as well. Um, We've got a closed group on Facebook. We've got thousands of guys over there who are praying for each other, encouraging each other, sharing advice and parenting tips and pushing each other towards Jesus, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, You can come be part of that group by going to dadtire.com, clicking the community tab. It will link you over to that group. Also want to let you guys know that we have two conferences coming up. So if you want to just get more in depth and feel like you need some more tools on becoming the spiritual leader of your home, you feel a little bit stuck on that. Um, you can go to one of the two conferences that we have coming up. One is in Ohio. Um, and so if you are in that area, we would love to have you come check out that conference. It's a full day, one day conference where you come, we eat food together. We spend a day talking about how the gospel changes the way that we live out our mission as men to be the spiritual leaders of our home. And then we have one in Austin coming up in November. So one is in September and then Austin is in November. Um, you can go sign up for those by going to dadtire.com and then just click the conferences tab. We'd love to have you come be part of that. If you're nowhere near the area and you still feel like you need some more tangible tools to help uh, just equip you as the spiritual leader of your home, the Dad Tired book is releasing and that's the whole book is geared towards that, at giving you practical ways and a theological perspective on what it looks like to be the spiritual leader of your home um, in very, very tangible ways. So, you can get that in book form by uh, just purchasing the book. And the cool thing is if you get it now before it releases, we're, we're about a week and a half away from releasing the book um, and then we'll go live. If you get it before that, you can be entered in to win a free cruise for two, which is nuts. You and your wife can go on a free cruise uh, if you are chosen as the winner for that. So um, if you go to dadtire.com forward slash pre-order and make sure to get the book before September 2nd, That week, we'll pick a winner. Uh, You and your wife will get to go on a free cruise. You just have to figure out how to get there as far as flights go or driving or whatever. But you do that. We'll take care of the rest. And it's going to be an amazing cruise. We're doing a Dad Tired Cruise 2020. Um, If you want to go on that regardless, obviously just sign up for that. And you can still sign up. If you've already signed up for the cruise and you win the giveaway, um, the publisher will reimburse you for what you paid for the cruise. So anyway, really, really good deal there. Um, I want to thank my friends over at Yardbird for sponsoring this episode. I actually stumbled upon Yardbird because I was uh, outside with the kids and the kids, we've got about 3000 neighborhood kids playing in front of our house all the time and cars just come flying down on our street, which if you ever want to see me lose my salvation, um, come watch me watch these cars fly down our street while little kids are playing. (laughs) Uh, I learned quickly that I've got some serious anger issues. So anyway, I was looking for like a good street sign that basically tells cars to slow down because we've got kids playing. I stumbled upon this little company uh, in Austin, Texas, or from out of Austin, Texas, called Yardbird. They make a sign called Captain Safety, which is just very creative. It's like there there are no other signs like this for your kids playing outside. And uh, they've got all kinds of interchangeable signs that you can put within this Captain Safety um, you definitely need to check it out. Go over to my Instagram this week. I'll post a little bit about it, but you can click the, the link that I have here in the show notes and uh, you can look at this Captain Safety. It's a really, really cool, durable, uh, high grade, high quality um, sign that it's going to catch or capture the attention of these. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to use a bad word for them, but these <laughs> these people who are driving way too fast down your street, if you need to get their attention and tell them to slow down because there's little kids playing um, this is definitely the sign you're going to want to get. So go to yardbirdoutside.com. You can actually use the promo code dad tired and they'll give you an additional sign. It comes with a sign that says free range children, <laughs> which is just awesome. I love that. Um, but it will, you'll get actually another sign with it. Um, they'll give you another sign that says kids at play. So you can, uh, interchange these signs. You can put one on both sides. Anyway, you definitely need to click the link so you can see what these things look like. They're amazing. We have one now. It definitely slows the cars down on our street. But um, today I have an interview with um, Mike Fisher, who uh, is a you know former professional hockey player, did very, very well for himself, um, ended up um, retiring within the last year and is just focusing on running his own little business and being a dad and a husband. He's the husband to Carrie Underwood, 
Um, just a cool, cool couple that are really being intentional about raising kids who love Jesus. And um, this is one of the best interviews. We've had some killer interviews on the show, um, but this is one of the better ones we've ever had. Mike just has such a heart for the Lord. He's doing really, really cool things to just be intentional as a dad to point his kids towards Jesus. So I know you're going to love this interview. Um, It's going to be really, really helpful for you. Next week, we're going to be talking about what it looks like for men, uh, why men are apathetic and kind of um, passive when it comes to the things of God. A lot of you guys have called in and left voice messages for me to play on the podcast and your thoughts on why men are apathetic. If you want to call in, you've got one more week to do that. It's 503-877-3836. Again, it's 503-877-3836. If you have some thoughts on why men are passive when it comes to the things of God, why men are apathetic, why men aren't really stepping up um, and engaging in the in things at church, um, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Try to keep your voicemails to about a minute or less so that we can actually post them on the podcast. But anyway, today's interview with Mike is I, I it literally is one of my favorite interviews we've ever done. I just really love his heart. I think you're going to enjoy it as well. Uh, enjoy this interview with Mike Fisher. Mike, super grateful that you're hanging out with us today. For uh, some of the audience who may not be familiar with you, maybe just catch us up. What are you up to these days? Tell us about your family. Well, I'm uh, I've been married for nine years, and uh, you just I've been retired for about a year, so I'm trying to you know transition to retirement. I have two two young kids, six uh, six months and uh, four and a half. Two boys, Jacob and Isaiah. My wife's name's Carrie, and um, we live a little bit of a different life, but we're definitely grateful and blessed and, um, just kind of enjoying a little bit of time this summer at home, uh, off tour and, um, and first day of school for my, uh, for my son, Isaiah. So it's a big day. So. Yeah, dude. That's exciting, man. Um, nine years, dude. That's a long time. Yeah. We're, when did yeah. you get married? Layla and I are 10 years. Oh, well, we I got guess married. we're coming up on 10 years. Okay. We got married, uh, July 10th. 2010. So nice. Yeah. We're uh, January 30th. <laughs> oh, yeah. January 30th. 2010. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Oh, man. How did you and Carrie meet? Uh, we met We met at a concert. Um, one of my good friends, actually, one of my mentors, was, was good friends with uh, her uh, band leader, okay. who is now my best friend, and I pay for all his dinners, obviously. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so they, they kind of you know, set it up where we'd meet at a concert in Toronto, which wasn't too far from where I was playing. And, um, we just actually, she, so as a bit of a filter, she made me go through meet and greet because she was like, well, what if he's a little strange and you know, I don't want to have to hang out with him backstage and be awkward. And so I go through this meet and greet and you know, little kids, little girls, and I'm trying to be the last one in line. And I'm like, you want to talk about awkward? Goodness. Anyway, it, it ended up going fine. And yeah, we all went we went out after with uh, her band for a bite to eat. And, and we hilarious. actually, we, we didn't really have a first date for about three months. So we, we just talked on the phone regularly and got to wow. know each other, which was awesome because come first date, or it felt like I already knew her, you know? Yeah. But what, yeah. well, but was somebody trying to set you up and they still put you in the meet and greet line? Yeah, but she <laughs> she was like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah, you didn't do a very good job of selling exactly. me if I'm in the you meet and greet. <laughs> you got a bad wingman, man. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. But, How long did you guys date before you got married? We were we dated about a year and a half. Okay. Um, yeah, we got engaged after about a year, and then uh, a year and a half we were married. So that's awesome. Yeah. Man. How's yeah. the six month old doing? He's doing good. He's uh, he's just a happy baby, always smiling. Um, not he's a decent sleeper, but he's uh, yeah, he's awesome. I love. He's starting to be a fun, fun age where personality is coming out, and yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. A lot of I've heard a lot of guys talk about um, like bonding with their kids as a dad. Normally mm-hmm. takes a little bit longer just because we guys typically bond shoulder to shoulder, like doing stuff. 
as mm-hmm. opposed to women are obviously growing the baby and face to face and if mm-hmm. they breastfeed and all that stuff. So, um, did you experience that or was there just like an instant connection for you with your kids? I, I found like the first one was Isaiah was a little different and I was, I was playing, so I wouldn't see him as much, um, r- early on. But when I did, I mean, I love, I've always loved babies. I've been around a lot of babies and your first one, like everything's so new. Yeah. Um, and I think I've bonded pretty well with him. Um, and then the second, uh, Jacob, I found because Isaiah was like four years old, I found I, I was spending more time with Isaiah while Carrie was with, you know, Jacob. So I yeah. think even though I, you know, I've been retired, I have been able to spend a lot of time with him, but it's like, okay, Isaiah wants to do stuff. I got to keep him entertained. Let's go fishing and let's do stuff to help Carrie while she's, you know, uh, with the baby. So I think it's been a little bit different that way, but I love the baby. I don't know why I just, I just like the baby stage. I'm, I, you don't always hear it too often, but no, man, I, I like changing di- diapers and everything. Cause I, I don't know. You just, it goes so quick and it's gone. And you're like, when Isaiah was three, we hadn't had Jacob yet. I, I, you know, you miss some of those, you know, him falling asleep on your mm-hmm. chest, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on the couch and some of those moments. But yeah. Did you guys talk about before you started having kids, how many you guys wanted to have? Uh, yeah, my, I, I've always, I came from, I have three other siblings and my mom's, you know, come from a family. She, there's 10, 10 of them. Wow. And then my dad's got five siblings or six of them. And so a big family, I was like, well, I kind of want four. And she's like, oh, well, let's, let's see how one goes and we'll take <laughs> yeah. it from there. And, yeah. But we'll see. We had a bit of a challenge with our second, um, as you know, there's a bit of a gap and we, we had some challenges, but we'll see what, what God you know, has for us. We've, we've talked about adoption as well. And, but right now it's just managing the two the best we can and, and we'll, we'll see. So, yeah, I know you, uh, have referred to Jacob as a miracle baby. Um, why is that? Do you mind me asking? Sure. Um, well, we, we had, my wife and I had three miscarriages oh. in between Isaiah and Jacob and it was, it was just a struggle. It was, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think it did bring Carrie and I closer together for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, even though the struggles, but, um, so I think it was after our second, uh, after our second miscarriage, I was actually coming back out of retirement and, um, starting to play again. I was doing a workout and, uh, and God, for whatever reason, I was just struggling. I was kind of just crying out to him that happens during my workout sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I don't know what it is, but just working out by myself and, yeah. and God, I just heard God say, you know, not audible, but just had this, he's like, you're going to have a son and his name's Jacob. Wow. And I was like, okay, I don't know why Jacob, I didn't, I told Carrie right away. She's like, okay. And she was pregnant at that time. And, uh, that was with her. Yeah. Uh, that was after two miscarriages. She was pregnant at the time. Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, you know, that's, Sounds good. <laughs> and then not too long, we have another miscarriage. And I was like, you know, then talking to her, it's like, well, we don't know God's timing. We don't know, you know. And then we stopped kind of, you know, you try your planning and you do all the, you know, the, the drugs to try to get pregnant and everything. And, and none of that was working. And so we just stopped. And then and then just try to take the pressure off. And we got pregnant again. And um then we thought we had another miscarriage. Um, the, this one weekend, she called her doctor. She's like, yeah, I'm sorry. And and I was like, well, never know. Go in Monday. She's like, okay. Well, um, on that weekend, she, she went up to sleep with Isaiah one night. She was having, she was having, just kind of having it with God, like wrestling with God like I was when he um, told me about Jacob. And, and she's like, I can't do this anymore. I can't, you know, if I'm not supposed to have any more kids, then that's fine but I just, I can't take this pain anymore. And mm. so she goes to the doctor the next day and everything was perfectly fine. Wow. And that was Jacob. So uh, when she was pregnant, all along, I'm like, I don't really know why Jacob, I'm looking at his name, you know, it's like, well, he's a supplanter. He's, you know, he's cut. And it was just, it didn't make sense. Well, then I put it together one day, probably about halfway through pregnancy. I was like, Jacob struggled with God and he wouldn't let God go uh, mm-hmm. all night until he had, till he received this blessing. And I was like, both Carrie and I had wrestled with God and, 
Um, and, and that's just a reminder and that's what Jacob did. And now he's, we kind of call him, we still do, you know, the miracle baby. And, um, that's why his name's Jacob and we're, we're grateful. <laughs> Yeah. That's so powerful, dude. That's super yeah. powerful, man. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. How many t- how yeah. many times in your life? I mean, do you feel like God speaks to you that clearly often, or was that a pretty rare experience? Uh, it's rare for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. it's rare. Uh, it's happened a few other times. Um, you only happens if I'm being like really intentional, hmm. um, but never obviously audible. Um, yeah. And, and and there's still doubts. It's like, well, really? I mean, right. but I, I needed to tell Carrie right away. We're gonna have a son. His name's Jacob. And it's like, and God just always, He's like, why do we ever doubt Him when you go through something right. like that? It's like, man, I, well, yeah. and Carrie's like, never again will I doubt Him after Jacob. You know, it's like, why do we ever doubt Him? Because He always comes through. It's crazy how but, quick we forget even huge stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and and through it all too, like. It was kind of like, okay. If, if if we don't have another son, God is still, He's still, uh, He's still our Savior. He's still good. Mm-hmm. He's still. Mm-hmm. It's not just because He provided the son Jacob right. that He's good. And and I I did never wanted to have that kind of. Well, He's only good because He's doing these good things for us. No, that's not true. And trying to live through that in the moments, like God, You're good all the time. We need to that's praise right. You through all of it. And I don't want to ever come across like. He's only good because we have a miracle baby, and 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 that's not that's not true. He's always good. That's right. So that's good stuff, man. Um, so bro, it's like it's pretty rare for a guy to like be as intentional as you. It sounds like you're being and just following the Lord and like trying to lead your family to Jesus. Obviously, you know I'm looking in from the outside, but like, how do you see yourself as the spiritual leader of your family and just trying to like be the first one to point them to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you, I guess I can tell you my goals, um, in what that looks like. First of all, I've had a great dad to model myself after, um, very present. One of the most selfless guys I know, people I Mm -hmm. know, both my mom and dad are always doing stuff for people and selfless and, um, you know, strong, strong Christians, like solid character. And, um, so I've had, you know, a great role model. Um, it's huge but, and rare. Super yeah, no rare, doubt. Yeah. So I feel like definitely grateful for that. And, um, first of all, I think most importantly is my marriage and that I'm loving my wife properly and the kids are seeing that and I'm lifting her up and encouraging her and, um, you know, the best way I can. And we, we definitely don't have a perfect marriage, but I'm grateful that we're all, we're on the same page and we love each other, um, very, very much. And, uh, we've, we've learned and we've grown over the nine years. There's, you know, always bumps in the road, but, um, you know, I think when kids came along, when Isaiah was born, it was, um, you know, something just changes in you where it's like, Hey, I, I don't know. i you know, I just remember the first prayer I had was like, I just wanted him to grow up to be a man of God. And I didn't mm-hmm. care if he played hockey or sang or did whatever. It's like yeah. all of a sudden, like my main focus and it's like that instant calling of, OK, this is what I want to be. And, uh, you know, I fail at it at times of being, you know, being that, that great dad. But um, but everyone does. And I, I find myself. <laughs> praying constantly for patience and then wisdom, yeah. Yeah. you know, being a dad. And it's like, yeah. man, there's things, even in marriage, I think marriage becomes a great mirror of, mm-hmm. of, okay, what, you know, my selfishness comes out in our marriage and I have to, I need checks all the time, my pride and those things. And, and having kids, you know, things come out too, or, you know, I, I find myself, you know, asking my little four-year-old for forgiveness Dude, yeah. and it's like, but I want him to be able to do that and, and go to God for that and kind of point him in that you know, direction. Um, I love learning too. I love reading books. And one of the books of, uh, I'm not quite finished, but it's called, uh, shepherding the heart of a child. Oh, yeah. Shepherding child's heart. Ch- Shepherding child's heart. Trip. Oh. Yeah. So good. I, I just started last week and I was like, Oh my goodness. I've yep, so missed, good. I've missed the ball on a lot of things. And I think I've done 
I've done some things okay, and but it's like, man, I need to go deeper, and I, I just don't. And that kind of real. I'm talking to my wife about this. Okay, what are our goals, and what are my goals as a dad, and and raising our children, and you know, we all want these, you know, well-behaved kids, but you know, if you're if you're going deeper than that and kind of speaking to their heart, then that's just going to be a byproduct of that. And, that's right. Yeah. But I think it's for me, it's and I, I have really good group of a men's group, and that we all have kids the same age. That's invaluable for that's so valuable for um mm-hmm. for young dads and mm-hmm. that you can you know other christian young dads that you can kind of bounce stuff off and a lot of them are going through the all the same things that we're we're going through and um, that's helped me a lot um yeah. but i think it's just you know i just you know it's and i think it's easy to say these things and i don't want to be the dad i guess and this is you know I had a great example and I'm, I'm grateful and, um, and I don't want to get caught up in, you know, being, it's so much, it's so much deeper and greater than just going to church on Sunday, praying before bread, praying before, um, you know, meals. And it has to be, a tw- it has to be all day long. And if I'm not talking about Jesus to my four year old every day, then, then I need a, that's what I need to be doing. And my wife and, and just relating things to him and, um, you know, whether it be through discipline and, um, or different ways. Um, but yeah, that's, and my son's always the first, like he'll remind us all the time. Oh, we got to pray. We got to pray. <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome. And it, you know, it's amazing, but it can't be just a routine of just right. praying too. It has to be like a deeper level, um, of just recognizing God and all the, you know, the sunsets before bed and different things. And so I guess it's all this to say that those, that's the goal in my heart and I don't always do it, um, the best I can, but that's, that's definitely the goal and something I'm learning and figuring out with, with my wife and her family. And, um, but that's the most important thing in raising kids is that they know Jesus cause it's, that's, that's what it's all about. So. That's a that's super huge, man. Coming from you, obviously a guy that you know you you found some success, and your wife has obviously found some success. So for you guys to say um, more than anything, like success for us looks like our kids being in love with Jesus. That's that's amazing to hear that. Um, and it's it's interesting too that you talk about your dad. Um, you know, and with your kids, you don't want to have this like compartmentalized faith where we just like pray before certain things and then we have like our mm-hmm. Jesus time. It sounds like your dad, that was like he bled Jesus and everything he did. Like you, you use the word selfless when you're talking about your dad a lot. Mm-hmm. And so it was bigger for you growing up, I imagine, than just like these compartmentalized faith times. But it was like, no, you saw your dad and your mom. It sounds like, mm-hmm. do you like live this stuff out in everyday life, you know? Yeah, That's my stuff kids are going to catch. Sure. Yeah. My dad was, he's always doing stuff for people. And, you know, we pray as a, we prayed as a family a lot. Um, and not just before dinner, like through certain moments and hard times, good times. And, and my mom, I always remember when I would come down, you know, come downstairs or, um, as a kid, she'd be reading her Bible in the morning before anyone got up. She'd be up doing her, my dad was usually up doing stuff. And, but, um, my mom's prayer warrior too. And, Mm. Um, you know, those, those are the things that you never forget. And it's like, they, they lived it out. It wasn't just a Sunday deal and you could tell, and that's, you know, that's what, you know, it's, it's so important and not just, uh, this Sunday and Sunday and then different during the week for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I meant to tell you that, um, the, another book by another trip, uh, trips brother. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the book you're reading, I can't remember the name, the first name of that guy. Is it Ted? Ted, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but Paul Tripp, his brother, has a book, a devotional called Parenting. And okay. uh, it's just like gospel-centered devotions every day regarding, and it's like specific around parenting. It's super, super good too. So that's that might be another one worth picking sure. up and having yeah. your mind blown a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. And I've seen, a, I think I saw on your Instagram that uh, that indescribable, that's mm-hmm. a good, I'm just trying to throw out resources for the guys listening. That's another yeah. good one. Yeah, I love that book. We, it's 
but sometimes that's if, if i'm rushed before you know that's my devotion in the morning seriously. too it's so good like seriously yeah yeah and yeah, raising a modern day night is a great one yeah. for dads yeah. with boys too i love that yeah. one i just finished uh raising boys dobson yep yeah that's another good one so yeah man yeah. lots of good resources um <laughs> You just said like if you're in a rush, like I, everyone obviously I don't like it, it. Really doesn't matter who you are. Everyone says they're busy. Um, yeah. I imagine you guys live a pretty busy, hectic schedule, um, even as a retired guy. Which, by the way, bro, like you're retired. That's insane already. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's well, amazing. I'm retired from <laughs> right, hockey. Right. <laughs> I still have some other stuff that's part time and business right. and interests. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah. it's it's nice to have freedom that's part of the reason why i did retire um just family and seeing my boys and you know just crazy schedule i just i couldn't i didn't really i couldn't do it anymore yeah yeah but yeah. uh is your your guys' schedule is still pretty crazy now do you go on tour when carrie goes on tour yeah so she she started tour uh may june and the she toured for about two two and a half months and i i was out uh Right, most of it with uh, with Isaiah, with our two boys, and um, yeah, we just kind of wanted to keep everyone together, and we did rent some houses in different hub cities and stuff, which made it you know weren't in hotels all the time, but we're on the bus a lot. Um, you know, Isaiah, our four year old, he he loves it. He boots around on his scooter, and he loves seeing all the people on tour that he gets to know, and um, it's it's just it's different, it, but. Um, it's been broken up. We've been able to be at home a fair amount this summer, and then in the fall we'll go out again for another couple months, which Isaiah is going to be in school, so we'll kind of take him in and out, and he'll be able to be on tour a little bit. So it's yeah. so we're, at least we're not going long periods of time not seeing each other. So, um, but yeah, we're busy. We're it's just it's just different. We've you know um, it kind of becomes your norm, but um, as long as we're together as much as we can and um you know we uh you just you just make it work you know i imagine you have to be like super intentional about connecting with carrie like, like yeah as much as you can or phone call like I don't, what does that look like just well prioritizing it's, your marriage yeah it, it's i mean you have kids and it's you know I, I think our i would say our marriage has gotten better since kids um in that it's just, well, it's just different. I love seeing my wife as a mom. It's like it's. Mm-hmm. I didn't see some of this stuff when she wasn't right. a mom. Now right. it's like it's crazy, and I, I love that. Um, but it, there is times where it's like we're going, and you know we got whether it be tour, and you know there's so many people around. It's like there's not a lot. Sometimes there's just not a lot of just us together. Yeah, but I think one of the big strengths of our marriage is um, the trust that we have. It's like, okay, she knows that, and I know. Okay, we're regardless, we're we're in this together. And but also, that can be for me. At sometimes, it's like, okay, I haven't really, you know, connected. We haven't had a good conversation in a long time. You know, we need to, you know, talk about things. We need to go on a date night. Sometimes we'll go a month or two without a good date night which i know is not good but that's just kind of it's reality right every now, once yeah. in a while it's like i can tell it kind of creeps in it's like okay i need to you know we need to you know connect at a kind of on a level that we haven't had you know and uh but that's you know we gotta i think that's why you know god you know we're just we're just different as far as you know women they're Sometimes it's hard to figure them out, but I think God <laughs> God knew what he was doing because he yeah. kept us guessing and kept us wanting to chase them to figure it out. Yeah. I know we never will, but that chase is important and I yeah. think I get comfortable. It's like, oh everything's fine, you know, I don't I don't need to talk about stuff. Um but it's like every once in a while I get uh, you know, reality checks like, no, I need to be communicating. That's one of the things that I've had to think of gotten better, but I need to improve on is just communicating really well with with my wife and having boys, I think's helped because I want to communicate with them really well. Um, yeah. My dad was a bit of like strong, silent type, hmm. you know. Um, that I think, I, and I have some of that in me. But um, you know, some people just say I'm a man of few words too. But 
if you get me talking about hunting or fishing or faith, then it's a little different. I can talk, I can talk a while, but, yeah. um, anyway, uh, yeah. So but. I know you love Jesus, bro, but like, has there ever been a time where you wanted to punch a dude out while Carrie's on tour? Punch a dude out. <laughs> I just imagine there's a lot, you got a lot of dudes like, you know, looking at your wife all the time. It's a uh, different reality. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't remember one moment of that but That's good. um pretty good for that yeah but i have wanted to do it you know obviously on, on the ice multiple times but <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> i didn't youtube but, anything before is there did you, did you ever get in fights yeah i've been in some i don't know how many in my career but i'd usually get in three or four a year not a lot but <laughs> every once in a while and that's and for whatever reason carrie loved it when i she would she'd be like i can't believe you didn't fight that guy i come on i'm like <laughs> I'm trying to like, you know, uh, just keep my cool out there and, you know, yeah. and my mom, the same too. She'd love it when I fought. I'm like, and fighting, like some, some people ask me, I get that all the time. Like, you know, how can you be a Christian and fight? And well, I'd be lying if there weren't some anger stuff that go on, you know, in yeah. sports, but I'll, sometimes it's just sticking up for your teammates. Sometimes it's trying to get your team fired up and and then after if you, you some you'll fight a guy and after it's like you can see him in the hallway and it's like yeah hey, good job yeah yeah way to go you know it's like kind of like boxing in a sense yeah. or you know yeah. where it's there's a job to be done and it's it's not always out of you know anger and malice but um anyway yeah that's funny yeah man. my wife yeah. liked it when i fought <laughs> so, uh, i've never told this story on the podcast before uh but I got in one fight. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably gonna, this might be edited out here. This was not in a sport. This was not in a sporting event. We were actually out with friends. It was late at night. Some dude just kept being way over the top with my wife, and I had been putting up with it, putting up with it all night. And then he just like he just got like right in her face. Was like all doing whatever he was doing. And then at one point said, "How can such a pretty girl like you be with a guy like this?" And bro, I just like lost it. I just like, oh. I, I got so pissed and totally <laughs> like in my anger, man, just like, you know, I shoved him. It turned into a whole thing. And, uh, my wife to this day, like if I, if she were sitting here right now, <laughs> she would still be so pissed about it. Like she's oh. so mad. I'm like, I was like fighting for you. I'm like, I thought this was going to oh. like get me points in your eyes. Uh, but no man, she hated it. She's like, Oh, I, I think yeah. you, you would have been. There's not many guys that wouldn't have done what you've done. <laughs> That's what I, I like went I see, to my I, church <laughs> the next yeah. day. I like repented to like all my guy friends that go to our church, like our community. I'm like, Hey yeah. man, I just need to confess this. And all my guy friends like, what? Like, bro, I don't know if you need to confess. Like, sounds <laughs> like you did the right thing. <laughs> and she yeah. was pissed. That made her even more mad. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I've never asked about carry on tour. I've never had anything that I can yeah. really remember, but, um, one, someone, one of the, uh, one of the guys in one of the, arenas recently i didn't even hear it or i would have been mad but made a comment about our four-year-old and, oh, and I, I didn't hear it at the time and then we went into carrie's dressing room and said, you hear what that guy said he's nope. like he's like he said something about our son being you know and us letting him run wild and you know get a muzzle on or whatever oh, and i was like if i'd have heard that i think i'd have had a real problem yeah. uh, <laughs> yep. but anyway it's yeah but oh, man yep just broken men still trying to follow that's Jesus. That's right. In. That's right. <laughs> uh, God's yeah. work. I love how you said marriage is a mirror, man. It's so true. Just I didn't know that I had the things in me, the sinful things in me, and the depths of sinful things in me until I got married and had kids. Mm -hmm. It just really it does expose the stuff in you that is it ever such a sanctification process. Yeah, <laughs> marriage and kids. I mean, I, we talk about kind of anger and your fight, and you know, I, I've. You know, I, I guess I, Carrie would say some of my best qualities are being like calm, cool, collected, being able to be really steady. And But then you're trying to, you, know, you have a four-year-old that's at times crazy. And then all of a sudden I, I this, you know, it's like, oh, you want to pull your hair out sometimes. I find myself, okay, just calm down, just relax. And, you know, especially in disciplining, like you can yeah. never discipline out of anger because right. it's, you know. And, and I've gotten at times just, you know, whether it be raising your voice or, you know, and it's like, okay, that's where I got asked for forgiveness from my four-year-old. It's like, man, I'm sorry. I, you know, I got too angry there. Forgive me. And 
you know, and uh, usually the response of that is, it's okay, daddy. Like, yeah, I love so you. And it's like, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, but, <laughs> you know, we just all need to be able to do that. And I would yeah. encourage the dads out there to, if you know it, just go to your kids because it's, it's important so they know that they can come to you, you know. So. Well, and, and even bigger in that is you're teaching them that you need Jesus. When you, exactly. When you ask for forgiveness, you're modeling for your boys that, like, I need mm-hmm. Jesus too. Like, there's broken parts of me that need Jesus to yeah. come in and to heal. And then when they grow up to figure out, like, hey, I need the gospel because even daddy needs the gospel. That's so huge. Yeah. So and then, and like, right now with, with Isaiah, it's like, you know, we— we try to be strict and, you know, discipline. And, um, and he's like, well, you, you and mommy can do whatever you want. And well, it's like, well, no, because we have to do what God wants us to do. And God has given you to us. And it's kind of explaining that, you know, they just think that they're, you know, you got to kind of explain them, you know, what God's intention was and, you know, trying to honor him. And, and we're, we're not just, you know, we're not just your, your rule maker. We're, we're under God's authority too. And so, but it's, it's interesting how their minds at four, yeah. um, you know, see things and try and always just, you just connect him back to, to what God, you know, wants and says and, you know, his words. So I love that uh, intentionality, man. Uh, before I let yeah. you go, I saw that you've got uh, a new clothing brand that I think a lot of our guys are going to want to hear about. Um, tell me about what you got going there. Yeah, so we started uh, t- uh, 2016. Um, it's yeah, it's a apparel brand called Catching Deers, and it started out of the hunt camp. One of our partners come into the hunt camp, and a lot of hunters have heard, you know, non-hunters refer to them killing things as catching. And so anyway, my brother the next year made up these hats, and they're just a foam trucker hat that said Catching Deers, and it was just for guys in hunt camp. And yeah, um, you know, as we were wearing them after we kind of like, well, you might be on to something here and hunters would stop us i need you know where do i get one of those hats and yeah. so that kind of turned into our apparel company and um you know we actually just launched uh, a week ago into tractor supply uh, we're in about 1200 stores across the states which is wow. crazy guys crazy. the favor he's given us and in, in a short amount of time but i guess you know the purpose of our brand is bringing guys together um in the hunting world and um you know, we're not shy about our faith. We want to connect guys to, to God through the outdoors. And, um, that's how I, um, that's a, one of the big reasons why I love hunting is just kind of the, you know, I live a bit of a fast paced life and, uh, you know, it's nice to get just some calm in the woods. I've always, since I was a kid, I've always loved being in the outdoors. And, um, so yeah, we've done, we've done some hunting shows, but now we do some, we want to keep it light too. We do a lot of, uh, you know, humor. My brother's, hilarious in front of the camera so we try and do some funny videos and keep it light and um you know encourage guys um and you know and have some apparel that people can be proud of and to wear and you know that's that's kind of my part-time gig right now after hockey so it's been it's been a lot of fun so yeah uh well i'd love to buy some of that gear and i think we should give it away to a listener because i i think a lot of guys i would love to do it um how about I'm making this up as we go, which is typically how I live most of my life here. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> how, about, how about we, uh, if, if any of you guys listening, share this episode with your friends, uh, and then you just tag me in it. I won't make them tag you if you don't want, cause that might bombard you, but that's all uh, good. Whatever. Yeah, tag me in it, uh, wherever you post on social media, just make sure you tag me in it so I can see it. And then, uh, by the end of, let's see this week, I'll pick somebody and we'll give away some of that catching deers gear to a guy sweet yeah good bro deal. this has been so good man thank you for hanging out and uh taking the time i know you're busy but this is really really good well i appreciate it i appreciate uh what you're doing and and your heart and i uh, before i said yes i listened to the you know, one episode about connecting with the heart of your wife and i, I loved it i love mm. i love that episode i love your heart and what you're doing and i, I know how important you know, being a dad is and being a, a dad that follows, that follows Jesus the best he can. Not a perfect dad, that's, that's for right. sure. But, um, so yeah, thank you for what you're doing and, and, uh, yeah, I love your podcast. So thanks for having me on. It's been, it's been fun. Yeah, man. It means a ton to me. Thank you. 